Yo, it's Eli. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to be doing part two of my series called The Finer Details of Branded. Uh, if you have not seen the first one, I'll have a playlist link in the description of the video. Um, but in case you don't know what this is at all and you just happen to click on it uh, because you saw Branded in the title or something, uh, basically the point of this series is not just to talk about what the branded cards do, uh, but more so how they piece together um, what you're supposed to do with them, because reading the card doesn't always help you know what to do with it. Um, and the first key player that I've not talked about yet in these videos is Quem, and I would like to do that today. So Quem is one of the newest, as of the recording of this video, uh, the newest additions to the branded lineup, um, and she is great. Quem is... Not a one-card starter like Alubur is, but in a lot of scenarios, she's actually a better normal summon. Um, so she has two main effects that I want to talk about. The first one is on summon. Whether normal summoned or special summoned, she can send a card that mentions Fallen of Albaz from the deck to the grave. Um, and it is card. It is not monster, spell, or trap. It is all of them. So that includes, obviously, Fallen of Albaz. You can send Albaz to the grave. You can send Cartesia, Mercurier, Albion the Shrouded Dragon, and if you still play her, Springin's Kit. Uh, most people, from what I gather, are not currently playing Kit, myself included. Um, it's not a bad card or anything, but you can play Kit, and if you do, you can technically send it off of Quem. Uh, the other cards that you technically can send off of Quam from deck to grave is your Branded Fusion, Lost, Red, White, and Retribution. Uh, you might notice Branded Opening is not included in this, uh, just so you're aware, this card does not mention Fallen of Albaz. But pretty much any other Branded Spell or Trap you can send off of Quam, um, and these are your monster targets from the deck. So, uh, what should you send off of Quem? Well, generally speaking, the better sends off of Quem tend to be cards like Albion the Shrouded Dragon and Fallen of Albaz. Uh, so I'll talk about these two first. The reason you would send these off of Quem are twofold. For one thing, they both count as Fallen of Albaz in the grave, meaning if you have Cartesia in your hand, you can special her to the field after the fact. That's pretty good. Um, the reason you would send Shroudion over Fallen of Albaz is to use Albion's Grave Effect to send one of these branded spells or traps or other branded spells or traps that are not here to the grave in order to set up a branded retribution, banish, recursion, play. Um, the reason you would send Cartesia... A lot of times I'll send Cartesia off of Quim if I know for a fact branded fusion will resolve. Meaning, if I hard open Quem, a Branded Fusion, and a Called by the Grave, or a Cross Out Designator, I just normal Quem, send Cartesia there, because I can Branded Fuse, and if they hit me with Ash, I'm prepared. Um, if you don't have protection for Branded Fusion, a lot of times it's better to not send Cartesia, and to potentially send something else, depending on what your hand is. Um, in that instance, if you're just setting up for your opponent's turn, sending Fallen of Albaz is great um, because of her other effect I will talk about in a second. I'll come back to that. Um, the only reason you would send Mercurier is if your hand is really weird and you have Quem in your hand and Bestial Sarnir or something and you have none of your other Albaz monsters. Sometimes sending Merc to the grave in order to banish it with a bestial and then search one of your other Albaz monsters can help you get your place started. Um, but usually it's going to be one of these three monsters here depending on what you need or what is also in your hand. Uh, sending Springin's Kit doesn't really help you off of Quem, to be quite honest. Don't worry about that too much, but you can technically send it. Um, and then any other branded spell or trap that you want to see in your hand that you don't currently see in your hand, if Retribution is in the grave somehow, Quem can send any of these other ones and you can add it to your hand as I said before. Um, so, the reason you would send Fallen of Albaz first over any of these other ones is, one, if you have Cartesia already in your hand, and two, you don't have protection from Branded Fusion. So, if you do get ashed on your Branded Fusion, and that's like kind of your main play outside of Quem, 
uh, sending Albaz can be very solid because of her trigger effect. Her trigger effect says, when a card leaves the extra deck, she can target a monster in your graveyard that mentions Fallen of Albaz and reborn it to the field. So that includes all of these cards right here, as well as your extra deck monsters. That does include things like Mira Jade, Titanoclad, Sanctifier, Albion, Lubellion, if he was in your grave for some reason, and Renbrum. Uh, if they were all special summoned properly and are now in the grave, Quem can reborn them back, which is huge. Uh, really understanding how, how to use Quem effectively is a big deal. Uh, the more you sort of unlock, you know, in your sort of arsenal of plays and experience, the more you'll realize, hey, Quem is kind of nuts. <laughs> She's actually kind of nuts. Um, but if if you have a minimal board set up, but you have Quem and Albez and Grave, whenever your opponent either makes something from the extra deck, or if you have something else to trigger Quem, then you can rebind the Albaz and pitch a card from your hand to go for a fusion play. Um, which is why a lot of times, not all the time, but a lot of times I feel Quem is actually a better normal summon than Elibur is. Um, because she's not dead on the field in your opponent's turn. Um, but again, it depends what's in your hand, it depends what you're trying to accomplish, all that sort of stuff. Um, and then a standard play, which I've talked about a little bit in my test hand videos, is if you have Quem and Cartesia on the board already going into your opponent's turn and a Mirror Jade, what you can do is you can use your Mirror Jade Banish, banish something, and then Cartesia will fuse herself in Mirror Jade for a Grand Guignol. Then when Grand Guignol hits the field, something left the extra deck, so Quem can reborn that Mirror Jade for a second Banish. That's like a very basic application of reborning a Albaz Fusion off of Quem, and it's very, very effective. Uh, so keep that in mind. Um, another thing to note about Quem, just before I move on to something else, is the wording is when a card leaves the extra deck. So that could mean when something is summoned out of the extra deck, sure. But that also includes some other things. So when Mira Jade banishes and he sends a Fallen of Albaz fusion for cost, that is a card leaving the extra deck. So if you have Quem and Mira Jade on board and Mira Jade banishes something and you want to reborn something like a Cartesia or an Albaz or whatever that's in your grave, you can trigger Quem off of the Mirror Jade Banish because something left the extra deck. Um, this also counts for cards like Pot of Prosperity. If your opponent Pot of Prosperities, something left the extra deck and got banished face down, so you can trigger Quem's Reborn. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I think that's all I have to say about Quem. Uh, let's move on to some other stuff. Alrighty, so the next card I want to talk about is Branded Lost. So this one I've also talked about a bit in my test hand videos. Um, but just in case, you know, I figure I should talk about it here. That way it's all in one convenient place. Uh, so this card uh, seems complicated uh, if you've never played the deck before. So I want to break it down for you, make it a little easier to understand. A little easier to digest, because it is a pretty damn good card. Uh, so it's continuous, for one thing. It stays on the field. And there are three main effects that you have to keep in mind with this card. Uh, the wording is really weird. Um, so I'm going to explain it in a much simpler way. The first effect is that while this card is face up on your field, any effect that would fusion summon a monster, the activation of that effect cannot be negated. The effect can be negated, but the activation cannot. So what does that mean exactly? Well, cards like Branded Fusion and cards like Cartesia, when she goes for a fusion effect, if your opponent has a monster that negates the activation of something while Branded Lost is on the field, these cards will still resolve. And of course, this also goes for things like your Branded in Whites and your Branded in Reds. But, you know, just keep that in mind. So a good example, a popular example is Barone de Flore. Barone de Flore negates the activation of an effect or a card. Same with Red Eyes Dark Dragoon. They both negate the activation. Meaning if this is on the field, or if you place this on the field when your opponent has a Barone, they basically have to decide, okay, well, do I negate Branded Lost with Barone, or do I hold Barone's negate for the Branded Fusion, and then it's not going to work anyways. So that's pretty crazy. What this won't protect you from are things like Ash Blossom. 
Ash Blossom negates the effects of Branded Fusion, so you will still, you know, die from the Ash Blossom. Um, along with Cartesia, if Cartesia is negated by Barone under Branded Loss, she is protected. But if she is hit with an Imperm or an Effect Veiler, she will not fuse because those negate her effects until the end of the turn. So that's a good thing to note, first of all. The second part of Branded Lost is probably probably the, the weirdest the weirdest one in terms of how it's worded. So after something has been fusion summoned, if that fusion summon in the chain was chain link one, whatever happens after the fact in the next chain, your opponent cannot respond to any of it. So what does that mean? Okay, let's say let's say you hit your branded fusion while branded lost is on the board. They have no ash. Whatever, they, they can't do anything about it. All right, Branded Fusion goes through. Coolio, coolio. Now, let's just say... I just bumped the camera, I apologize. Let's just say you go the Albion line, okay? And bring out Albion. And we go Chain Link 1, Albion to Fuse. This is a simplified example. Um, and then Chain Link 2 will be Branded Lost. We'll talk about the search effect in a second. And let's say that's all we have, just Chain 1, Chain 2. Your opponent cannot do anything here. They can't hit Albion with an Imperm. They can't hit Albion with an Effect Veiler. Nothing. Because Branded Fusion was Chain Link 1 while Lost was on the field. You get to do your thing the way you like. So let's say that resolves. Let's say you add something off Branded Lost. Again, we'll talk about that in a second. And Albion fuses some other stuff into Lubellion. Again, Chain Link 1 while Branded Lost was on the field, Albion just resolved as Chain Link 1. So your opponent still cannot respond. They cannot hit Lubellion with an Imperm or a Monster Negate or anything like that. So let's say we, we do the Lubellion Fuse. He shuffles himself back in an Albaz, and you make a Mirror Jade. Now a cool part about this is this is still in the window if you have any trigger effects or quick effects or whatever where your opponent cannot respond because Chain Link 1 previously was Lubellion's fusion. So what you can actually do in this situation is you can, if you have no spell speed 1 trigger effects, you can fire off Mirror Jade's banish in the summon window. And because Branded Lost is still protecting you, they cannot even respond to this first Mirror Jade banish, which is pretty cool. That actually comes up sometimes uh, when you're playing into a board. That can be kind of important. Um, but after that, after the Mirror Jade resolves, then your opponent can respond, generally speaking, because you have finished all of your fusions. Um, and the reason it is important when losses on the field to make things like Albion or Lubellian Chain Link 1 is because every time the chain resolves back, your Chain Link 1 is still the fusion summon of a monster. So continually, your opponent will not be able to respond until you're done fusioning, which is pretty huge and pretty important. Um, so keep all of that stuff in mind. Um, and then the last little bit is it has a search effect. When this is on the field and you fusion summon something, you can add a monster that mentions Fallen of Albaz from your deck to your hand. Um, so a lot of those monsters we just kind of talked about in the Quem section. You can add Quem, Fallen of Albaz, Mercurier, Albion the Shrouded Dragon, Springin's Kit, and Cartesia wherever she went. Right here. There she is. Cartesia. Nine times out of ten, your first search off of Branded Lost will actually be Mercurier. Because that usually means you have an Albaz fusion on the board. And while that is on the board, this in your hand becomes a generic monster negate. So that's pretty good. Usually you will be searching Mercurier. If you already have Mercurier in your hand, um, a lot of times it's better to get cards like any of these four here. Again, you could grab Kit, but most people aren't really playing Kit. I find that these four here, if you already have Mercurier or you used him or you don't need him or whatever, any of these four are solid options, depending on what you need. Um, so, if you don't have access to Quem right away, 
and you haven't used your normal summon yet, or you're you're hoping to normal summon Quem on the coming turn, searching Quem can be solid. Same with Cartesia. If you don't have access to Cartesia yet, and you'll be able to get it on the board, then, you know, that's a really solid search. This is a really good card. Um, and then Fallen of Albaz, if you already have Cartesia on the field, adding Fallen of Albaz to your hand so that you can potentially make something organically can be solid as well. Uh, the reason you would grab Shroudion is normally if you trigger Branded Lost on your opponent's turn and you already have access to Mercurier. Uh, because this is a great discard off of things like Dragoon, because it still has effects in the grave. It's not a dead card in the grave off of this card, which is nice. Um, and also just going into your next turn on a crackback sort of turn, uh, this is a great card to cycle through your branded spells and traps and things. Um, and, so, you know, sometimes his effect from the hand is just fun. Sometimes you just draw something crazy. <laughs> so that's cool. Um, so all of these are good, generally speaking. But as I said, most of the time, you're going to want my courier. Um, there is a specific scenario where your first search is not Mercurier and it is Albion the Shrouded Dragon. And I talked about that also in a test hand video. Um, in one of the test hand videos, I had a board where I basically just went crazy. Like I just overcooked. I had like a Mirror Jade, I had like Branded and Red set up and Dragoon. Um, but I had no cards in hand after the fact. In that case, if you have no cards in hand and it's your first turn and you have Dragoon, Search Shroudion first. Reason being is Dragoon's negate is a more generic negate than Mercurier. And if you have things set up to fuse on your opponent's turn, you will get your Mercurier later anyway if you want it. But this, if you have Dragoon, this is just a better pitch off of Dragoon. Uh, because if you pitch this off of Dragoon, it feels a little bit wasteful. Um, but yeah, hopefully that, that clears up everything about Branded Lost. This is a complex card if you're new to it, uh, but it is very good and very important. So hopefully that helps you. Alrighty, so I think the last thing I want to talk about today, um, just to not make this video go on for an hour, is going to be your other Albaz fusions. Uh, so things like Sanctifier, Titanoclad, and Rindbrum are... They, they tend to be the more popular ones that people play. Most people don't play Brigrand anymore. Um, but the, these are big name fellas, and I want to talk about them more in depth. Um, so, obviously, we'll talk about materials first. They all require Fallen of Albaz. That's a given, right? Duh. Um, but what else do you send to make these guys? So, for Rindbrum, in most builds, it's going to be Albaz and Mercurier. In terms of, like, regular branded Despia builds, it's going to be Albaz and Mercurier. If you are playing Springin's Kit, you can use Kit as well. Uh, which is actually kind of kind of decent because then you can still use Mercurier from your hand. Uh, but keep that in mind. Um, and then Titanoclad, you require Albaz and a monster, any monster, that is 2,500 or more attack. So, Titanoclad can be made through an Albaz fusion play, like with one of your opponent's monsters. 2,500 or more attack is a very generic condition, so that's actually pretty easy to do. Um, but as far as in-engine monsters, if you're making it through, like, Cartesia or Branded Fusion or something, um, a lot of times your best options are things like the Bestial Lubellion, and I'll be on the Shrouded Dragon because they are both level 8s. They are the highest level monsters um, in your main deck, not including hand traps. Which, if you're main decking something like Nibiru, and you just need big boy damage, send this with Titanoclad. Uh, because Titanoclad gains attack based on the total level of his materials. So if you make him with Albaz and the Bestial Lubellion, he goes to 3700 attack because Lubellion's an 8, Albaz is a 4, he gains 100 per level. So 2500 base attack plus 1237. Um, sending Albaz and Nibiru will make a 4k Titanoclad, which is very, very funny. Um, and then I'll be on the Sanctifier Dragon before we get too in depth with anything else. You need a light spellcaster, uh, which you can technically use Granguino from the field if you would like. That's not the worst thing. I guess that could come up. But if you're using Albaz and Granguino from field, you'll probably want to just make Mirror Jade instead of Albion the Sanctifier Dragon. But you can do it. You can do it. It is a light spellcaster. But normally it's going to be either Cartesia or Quem. Um, okay, so 
more in depth. Usually, you're gonna wanna make Sanctifier with Cartesia. Usually, you're gonna wanna make Titanoclad with the Bestial Lubellion or Nibiru if you want the straight up damage, but the Bestial Lubellion has some extra utility that I will talk about in a second. And most builds aren't playing kit. You can use it, as I said before, but we're gonna assume that you're probably not playing kit. So you just have Mercurier for Rinprom. Uh, the reason you would use Cartesia instead of Quem if you're making Sanctifier off-branded fusion is simply because Quem doesn't very easily get out of the grave. Whereas Cartesia, if a fusion hits the grave, is coming back to your hand or it can be reborn off of Quem, uh, which is really nice. Titanoclad sending the Bestial Lebellion is great because if you need big damage and you need to hit over an extra deck monster, he has protection from extra deck monsters the turn he is summoned. Um, and he is a level eight dark dragon, which means you can attack over whatever problem monster you're facing. And the Bestial Lubellion in your main phase two can tribute him. He'll come to the board and place Branded Lost onto the field, which can help you extend with some other things. Um, and then Nibiru is just, if you just want the big damage, go for it, man. That's funny. I love 4K Titanoclad. That's like one of my favorite things. Um, and then Rinbrum, like I said, it's just my courier. Uh, I tend to not make Rindbrum through Branded Fusion because Rindbrum by itself is really not that crazy. Um, normally, you want to make Rindbrum as a support to something else that you've already made, like a Mirror Jade. Like Rindbrum Mirror Jade combo is pretty good. I also don't like making it through Branded Fusion because that means I won't get Merc to my hand. I only play one. Um, so, I don't know. I feel like the Merc negate. Generally speaking, it's just better than the Rindbrum negate because Rindbrum's negate is only extra deck monsters. Mercurier is any monster. So, you know, just some stuff to note there. Um, but when would you make all of these three? So, Sanctifier, obviously the elephant in the room is, yeah, people use Sanctifier for the gimmick puppet lock. Um, and you can do that. I'm not going to stop you from doing that. Uh... I, I will warn you, though, that you won't make many friends that way, um, and it's also very, very boring, but you can do it. It's very strong. That's his main application. Uh, but Sanctifier also has some, some niche uses um, that are kind of worth mentioning. So, he can target two monsters in either graveyard, either one from each or two from one, and special summon one each to either sides of the board. So what that means is you can uh, reborn an Albaz to your side of the field and something you want to fuse with to your opponent's side of the field. If you want to make something, that can always be good. There's some fun combinations that come up with that. You can also reborn Cartesia to your field and then just some junk monster to your opponent's field that, that they can't even use. Something like a Despian Tragedy or Bestial Sarnia or whatever. If they have no synergy with those cards, that's kind of nice too, because that means they control a card, which messes up some things for certain decks. So, prime example, if your opponent is playing a card like Kashtira Fenrir, if they control a monster, then they can't special Fenrir from the hand. Um, as well as some other stuff, you know, like, take your pick, you know, like your Cyber Dragons, your Sword Soul Tenyis, what have you. Not that those are particularly strong decks, but a lot of monsters like to special summon themselves before you control anything on the board. He messes that up. He also messes up the usage of certain board breaker cards. Things like Lightning Storm require you to have nothing on your board. Same with Evenly Matched. So he can potentially save you from those things, which is kind of cool. Um, but you really, generally speaking, won't be making this instead of Mirror Jade uh, through Branded Fusion because he just doesn't do as much. Um, another thing to mention about him is just he is a 3k beater off of Branded Fusion, um, which the only other card that does that is Titanoclad. Um, and that's kind of nice when you're playing into a board sometimes, because if you think you're gonna go Albion and or Lubellion and they're gonna get impermed or something or negated somehow, and you won't get to that 3K benchmark, then sometimes straight to this or straight to this is okay. Um, and he can't be targeted by anything, which also is kind of notable. That's actually pretty good. He can't get impermed or effect veiled or whatever, which is pretty nice too. Um, and then the last little thing about Sanctifier that I like 
is in a grind game scenario, Sanctifier can be sort of a big a big play because if you clear some of your opponent's board, maybe they cleared some of yours and you make Sanctifier, you can likely reborn your Mirror Jade and give them a junk monster. Or you can steal some of their bigger boss monsters from their graveyard, bring them to your side of the field, things like Barone or whatever, because now you have a Barone Negate and they have less resources out of their own graveyard. So that's pretty cool. He has a lot of applications outside of the Puppet Lock, um, and admittedly, most of them aren't as strong as the Puppet Lock. The Puppet Lock is insanely stupid and cringe, but I still think this is a cool card. And I still think you should consider playing him for a variety of niche sort of reasons. Um, Titanoclad, like I said, is just to get over something beefy. He has extra deck protection. You can tribute him off the Bestial Rebellion, get a continuous branded spell trap to the field. And then on end phase, Titanoclad can summon either Quem or Albaz to the field. Which, if you're going for a fusion play on end phase, that actually can be kind of cool sometimes. Um, or if you just want a way to search Quem. Uh, that's also pretty good. One thing that's nice is if you don't have access to Quem or Cartesia and you decide for whatever reason Titanoclad is a good play, sending him, or sorry, sending the Bestial Lubellion to make him and then doing the tribute play. On end phase, you can special the Quem and then Quem will send Cartesia to the grave. And since this is in the grave this turn, Cartesia will go straight back to your hand. Uh, so that can get you some extra card advantage as well. That's actually pretty good. I love his grave effect a lot. Um, and then Rindbrum, I'll be honest, you don't normally make Rindbrum naturally. Normally, it's for his grave effect, which is crazy. Uh, if you have trouble making a Mirror Jade, Rindbrum in the grave with a Fallen of Albaz can banish himself and reborn Albaz to try to fuse with something on your opponent's field. It's a disruption, it's kind of scary, and even if you don't use it to uh, reborn Albaz specifically for a fusion play. If you do this on like the end phase of your opponent's turn just to have an Albaz on your board to fuse with, that's also pretty good sometimes. That that definitely can help you. Um, he's not normally your first send off of Mirror Jade. Normally Mirror Jade will send Albion first or Titanoclad first. Um, but if you if you make like Grand Guignol and you have Albaz in Grave, Grand Guignol sending this can be a nice backup plan to make a Mirror Jade on your opponent's turn, um, which is really, really great. If you happen to make Rinbrum, he's a very fun card, uh, but don't underestimate his Grave Effect. It's actually very, very good. Um, so yeah, I think for today, that is going to be it. This video is already plenty long. Um, if you have any questions about anything, as always, feel free to ask. Uh, I will do my best to help you. I hope this video was helpful to you. Uh, thank you for watching. I'll definitely do more of these. Um, if you have anything specifically, if you're new to the deck or whatever, and you need help sort of understanding when to play a certain card, um, let me know in the comments, and I'll be sure to talk about that one in the next video, uh, possibly over some other things. Um, so yeah, thanks again. Peace out. Hope you enjoyed.